Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, appreciate you stopping by on today's video. Now I come from a mechanical background, when I initially joined the British Army I was a tank mechanic, I loved every second of it, best job I ever had literally. And that's followed me into my civilian career since leaving the British Army, I'm now working in the aviation sector. Um, and that's why I want to talk a little bit about it today, because I really do feel like aviation and mechanical uh, technicians for aviation are totally, totally underappreciated in every sector, from military to civilian. And you know, one of the things that I learned from transitioning from the heavy-duty mechanical diesel side of things with tanks and, and vehicles and trucks and things to the aviation world is the stark differences between the way in which things are done. Uh, you know, when you were in the tank world, working on the tanks, you hit something hard enough, it'll go in the hole eventually. Uh, it's not the same, obviously, in the aircraft world. It's just totally different way of thinking. And those who work on aircraft, uh, hats off to you. I mean, really, I, I work in the industry myself, so I do appreciate those who are supporting, maintaining, and repairing aircraft, especially in the military sector, because military aircraft are constantly put through the strain of operation after operation, or flight after flight after flight, uh, and very little downtime, especially with, you know, today's tempo and the way things are going, uh, especially with things like cutbacks financially that can reduce uh, the capacity of repair or parts or whatever else. And knowing what the aviation sector is like and the way in which procedures are done on aircraft just adds that additional strain and technicality to trying to do a simple job. Um, as you can see, this is a Super Stallion helicopter from the US Marine Corps. These uh, technicians seem to be repairing the rotor assembly uh, for the top of the rotor blades for the helicopter, which you can see is huge. I mean, there's three Marines on here uh, working around this rotor assembly, and it is absolutely huge. I mean, it really puts it into perspective the kind of size of some of these components on these aircraft. They're absolutely massive, and not just the size, but look at the complexity, the harnesses, the couplings, the hydraulics. To, to work, just the rotor on this thing is absolutely insane. I mean, the blades of this aircraft are huge. The, the helicopter blades of a Super Stallion, you know, they're big beasts. CH-53 helicopters really do carry heavy haul. They're the heavy hauler aircraft other than Chinook uh, and Osprey for the Marine Corps. So they're doing what they need to do, but with that being said, they need maintenance and a lot of maintenance. These aircraft are being put through their paces. They are older uh, and a massive respect to those who work on them. You know, really though, uh, it's not as simple as, as what you think. You're looking at these people thinking, well, yeah, they're just kind of fixing it and doing their thing. When it comes to the aviation world, every single thing is tracked, talked to a specific, uh, you know, specification. Uh, every process that you do is, is monitored. Uh, this is is sort of flight line mechanic maintenance, so it's a little less uh, stringent than say working on the internal hot sections of an aircraft uh, engine, something like that, which I'm more prominently used to. But this is still exactly the same level of importance. As you can see, the uh, the technicians here are removing lock wire, which prevents the bolts from spinning out from their position and putting them into the little bag there, so it's reducing FOD or foreign object debris. So unlike, you know, the tank world where I had lock wire, I could just strip it off and throw it in the garbage or, you know, throw it down the hull somewhere, every single little piece has to be tracked. If you drop a nut, you drop a bolt, that has to be found. This aircraft could be grounded. Literally, I mean this in every sense of the word. This entire million dollars, millions of dollars worth of helicopter could be grounded because a nut or a bolt was not found and that was accidentally dropped by one of these technicians. That's how serious this stuff is. So that's why I respect those who work in the aviation sector. I know a lot of people give huge amounts of, uh, you know, wow, like, you know, an Abrams tank or a Challenger tank or a Leopard tank. That must be so much mechanical effort to do that. 
This job's a little different, okay? It's not huge amounts of mud and slime all over you, crawling through puddles underneath the hull and changing oil and all that stuff. It's obviously not as dirty as, as some of the sort of heavy duty roles, but when it comes to technicality and using your brain, it's a lot, right? It's a lot of mental strain. I mean, look at these guys. They're trying to do a talk sequence uh, on this road. They're trying to talk the bolts or the nuts in a specific sequence to ensure there's an equal measure of force for the talk that they're applying. And all these things are a process that they're following. There's a, a routine, there's a schedule they have to follow. When I was working on tanks, I mean, yes, there's a, you know, there's a schedule or there's a uh, process or an instruction guide you can use, but rarely did we do it. Once you get into the swing of things, you just remember things, you do things a little differently. As long as you get the job done, the vehicle drives out into the battlefield, you're good. With aircraft, you just can't do that. That Legally, by a, you know, transport authorization, uh, through wherever you're flying it, you have to follow the rules. You have to follow the procedures, the torque specs, the specific assembly instructions. And that's a lot of strain on a team like this, especially under a deadline. You can't cut corners. You don't have the ability to do something quicker this way or quicker that way. Now, sometimes you can get around that. There is capability for you to do that. But, you know, from my civilian career, it's it's really challenging for people to to work in this sector because they're so used to working on things that they could just build at home like their car or something like that when they come to an aircraft it's like yeah they, you just can't do things like that so this video is really to just do a massive shout out and thanks to those who are repairing and maintaining these absolutely beautiful machines both on the ground and in the air you know any kind of mechanical or technical trade i know we get a lot of uh we get a lot of banter with the pogue and you know uh you know, the grunt life, hating on uh, technicians and all that sort of the rent sort of thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, these aircraft aren't going anywhere without these people, right? And their expertise and their skills and, and knowledge into how this stuff works is imperative. Uh, they can't fly without it, guys. It, it, it's so important when it comes to repair and maintenance of these aircraft. One little bolt could bring this aircraft down. As you can see, these uh, technicians are using a laptop. So that laptop actually has their work instructions on there. So they're following a process stage by stage that's telling them, ensure you check point A, ensure you talk to point B, remove this, then remove that. It's all a sequential stage system, so they forget nothing, uh, that nothing is missed. And it's something that can, as I said, be really hard for those who have worked in sort of the non-aviation sector to adjust to that because it can be frustrating. You know, you're like, I know I can do this ahead of this. It'll be quicker. But there's a sequence you must follow so that nothing is missed. Um, I've heard of situations, I swear it down, like I've heard of people who, when I was in the Remi, working as aviation technicians um, on Apache longbows and they couldn't find a washer, a very small flat washer, that's all it was, uh, just a washer that was accidentally dropped, uh, I think it was in the cowling of one of the aircraft, and they had to ground that aircraft, they found it, they had to strip the entire side of the helicopter off, little did they know that the washer wasn't actually even on the aircraft when, the, when it was dropped, it fell off, bounced off the side and was found under a toolbox about three meters away from the aircraft, but that grounded that Apache for almost two to three days, so when you're working in an environment like that, it's huge amounts of strain and pressure, especially if you've got, you know, a troop sergeant behind you saying, like, we need this aircraft out on the ground, or <laughs> out on the ground, out in the sky as quickly as possible, and you drop a washer, it's like, it's it's pretty nerve-wracking. So, I'd like to do a massive thank you to those who, you know, are maintaining and repairing uh, helicopters and aircraft of the military and civilian sector. Uh, it's, it's an important job that you do. You know, some of these aircraft are doing incredible missions and applications around the world, and I don't think we really appreciate that enough. Uh, especially, you know, uh, behind closed doors. Like, we're not really thinking about what these helicopters and these aircraft around the world are doing, you know, whether it be human humanitarian aid, uh, military support, uh, relief for disasters, whether it be hurricanes or whatever else. These things are working day and night non-stop for the most part. And it's, it's really impressive. And the technicians follow these aircraft around the world doing what they need to do. Uh, so, massive shout out to you if you are one, and if you are one, I'd love for you to leave in the comments section any experiences uh, that you've had with being a technician, maybe some funny stories, I'd love to listen to them. Um, I must admit, I love working in the aviation sector, it's, it's an amazing realm to work with. You really start understanding how important and critical aircraft are to society, not just the military, to the world. They really are. I mean, I can't express how much... Uh, work is being done in the background in the aircraft world that we don't even realize crop dusting I mean food on your table right uh, mail you know uh, medical supplies it's huge it's it spawns hugely across the spectrum of things that we just take for granted 
Uh, and you know, a rotor assembly like this on this aircraft, it's not a simple task. I mean, look at the size of that thing. So these three Marines that are working on it, uh, you know, really doing doing the service proud for maintaining and keeping these aircraft flying. So hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. And once again, massive shout out to those who are in the maintenance world. Uh, keep up what you're doing. And if you did enjoy, please leave me a like and feel free to hit that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming content in the future. And you can go check out the description box below for my Patreon, my PayPal, if you wish to financially support my channel. I would really appreciate that. And thank you to everyone who has been. Uh, I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. It really does mean a lot to me. Have a wonderful day, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.